The Federal Government's most essential resource is its 2.6 million employees who comprise the most professional nonpartisan civil service in the world. Developing and enforcing the policies that protect them from political interference has been the task of an independent agency called the Office of Personnel Management. OPM administers the largest employee, employer sponsored health insurance program in the world and processes retirement benefits for 2.5 million federal retirees and survivors. It vets and trains candidates for some of our nation's most important civil service positions. OPM is the agency that serves the people who serve the American people. Today's hearing is about the administration's proposal to all but abolish OPM. This hearing is about the administration's plan to eliminate the independence of the civil service. The administration wants to take over the merit policy making functions and put them into the highly politicized environment of the White House itself, away from direct congressional oversight and inspector general review. It's clear that this was decided a priori to undermine the civil service protections apparently and was developed this reorganization proposal to obscure its actual objective. This hearing is about that plan to reverse more than 136 years of reforms implemented to professionalize the civil service and insulate it from partisan political activity and influence. This hearing is also about how the administration seems to have hidden its plans and intentions from Congress until this last week. So today is a reckoning. Much is at stake. OPM was created to make the rules that define what constitutes a prohibited political activity by a federal employee. Do we as a nation want to change that? Do we want any president to determine what constitutes politi political activities for our federal employees? OPM crafts the rules that protect federal employees from racial, political, or religious discrimination. Do we want any president interfering with those rules that protect employees from discriminatory practices? OPM regulates the standards by which federal job candidates are assessed, like skill level, experience, and fitness for the position. Do we want any president to make the rules that govern merit and skill? OPM's roots run through the Civil Service Reform Act of 1978, all the way back to the assassination of President Garfield and the creation of the Pendleton Act back in 1883. OPM is the grandchild of those reforms that tried to overturn a corrupt patronage system from that era. The independence of OPM and the merit-based civil service system of today are the legacies of American reformers, and their institutions are just as relevant today as they were when they were created. The administration's proposal seems to ignore history and would undo many of those carefully evolved reforms. The administration's proposal was developed without input from key stakeholders, including Congress, federal employees, federal annuitants, and the private sector. Without any notice from agency leaders, OPM employees woke up to a budget request that eliminated their agency and perhaps their jobs starting October 1. This proposal was released without any data or evidence to support its goals. It's a reckless endgame in search of a rationale. We know this because OPM Director Weikert, who's here with us today, continued to push back our hearing date to provide time for the administration to generate justifications for this ill-conceived plan. Although the director originally agreed to testify before the uh, subcommittee on May 1, that agreement was rescinded to push for a later date. Uh, headquarters staff repeatedly refused to provide documentation to demonstrate even a minimal amount of due diligence in developing and executing a massive change to our federal government operations. They ignored essential management practices and have already done damage, I think, to our federal workforce. This isn't even building the plane while flying it. This is landing without landing gear and hoping no one sees the sparks. This proposal, in my view, 
is short-sighted, inadequate, and uncompelling. Nearly a year after the administration issued its government-wide reorganization plan, such as it was, which included the plan to dismantle OPM, the administration has not provided a, a, this committee with a clear and convincing reason for dismantling this key federal agency. For example, the administration has not provided even basic information such as a compelling reason why eliminating OPM is necessary, a clear plan and timeline for the desired changes, a report on the alternative plans considered and why they were rejected, if they were considered, that is, a legal analysis of the authorities they have and those they will need to make their preferred changes, a cost-benefit analysis of this plan, an analysis of how such a move would affect federal employees, including possible reductions in force, a risk assessment and contingency plan should they not get the authorities they need, a timeline of how and when they engage key stakeholders throughout the process, and a detailed plan for how they will protect the huge amount of incredibly sensitive data and information currently curated at the OPM. We have not seen anything from this administration to convince us that any part of this plan is a good idea and would make our Federal Government more effective and efficient. We are not here to pretend OPM is perfect. It is not. In fact, Mr. Meadows and I were on this committee when we had extensive hearings about the data breach that revealed imperfections, to say the least, at OPM. OPM's Inspector General has found that the agency struggles with data security. That is an understatement. Claims processing and information security governance. The Government Accountability Office has identified 18 priority recommendations to, the, to improve the agency, including improving data quality, improving the antiquated Federal job classification system, and strengthening controls over information technology systems. This hearing is not a partisan attack. In fact, it is going to be very bipartisan. Um, I will say this. I had the privilege of meeting Director, Acting Director Weikert yesterday, and I am certainly convinced of her sincerity. Um, I don't think she has some hidden agenda. Um, we, we, I think, disagree on the analysis and on the proposed solution. And hopefully yesterday's meeting was, and this hearing is the beginning of a dialogue. But our concerns are very real. This hearing, I hope, will be a wake-up call. Our Federal workforce is our greatest asset. Improving OPM ought to be a bipartisan goal. But revitalizing OPM requires careful planning and clear understanding of its problems. Successful government transformation often take long term, and they take consistent and transparent stakeholder engagement, something that has been lacking so far, quality data and metrics, and performance milestones. The administration has taken, unfortunately, none of these basic steps. I look forward to this hearing to see how we can work across the aisle to improve the situation uh, and to look at the alternatives available to us. 